Hi there, I'm Mike Mike 37 and today I'm going to be showing you how to retexture a Dragon Age item. First thing we're going to do is we're going to um, download Dragon Age tool or DA tool um, because that'll make our jobs a lot easier for browsing models and stuff. So uh, go to Google and search for DA tool, all one word, and you're looking for the result that gives you the Bioware Social Network page, um, which will look something like this. Um, so we want to, to go to the files section and download um, DA tool 0.5 or if there's a more recent version than that one but I'm guessing there probably won't be. Um, so download that and extract that and all the rest of it and you should end up with um, Dragon Age tool executable. Um, running that should give you um, a little black square with probably a, an error message telling you obsolete version. Ignore that, that's, that's not a problem. Let me just drag this in the middle here. Okay, so to browse um, models using DA tool, we go to File, Browse Models, and because I'm interested in, in retexturing a piece of armor, we look in Characters and Human Male. Obviously, if you're looking for something else, then uh, you'll, you'll go to that. Um, you're shown the first model in the list, and to browse through them, hold down the Control key on your keyboard and hit the right cursor to uh, go through them, left and right on the keyboard, um, go through the models. So uh, this, is, this, this demonstrates, I think, um, just how important textures can be. Um, the next four models I'm going to show you all have the um, exact same model, but have different textures, and they look quite, quite distinctly different. So um, looking through these four here, um, in fact, I think there might even be five. Yeah, there's five of them. They're all exactly the same um, model, but a different texture. So you can do a lot with just the texture. Uh, and the one I'm interested in, this one here. So uh, I'm going to um, save out all of the relevant files, and we do that with File, Save All. Um, ignore my <laughs> messages. Um, and I'll be saving it to a folder called Armor, just because I've made that there. And it'll tell you it's saved eight files. Eight files is the usual number for, for these things. What those eight files are is um, the MSH, which we're not too concerned with. That's the, the mesh model. Um, so we'll not be modifying that at all. The um, PHY is the physics that contains the collision and stuff. So those two we're not we're not going to be changing in any way. The MMH is the um, the way the engine understands what to do with the mesh. So it says what kind of a model it is. So in this case, it's an armor model, that sort of thing, um, and which material to use. Um, this is the material material object MAO um, that says which textures to use. Uh, and then finally, the four textures in DDS format. Now, to modify DDS files, you'll either need to convert them to something that your image editing uh, program understands, or a lot of programs, um, Photoshop and the GIMP included, um, have plugins which allow you to open DDS files natively. So I have one of those installed. If you don't, um, Google whatever program it is. If you're using Photoshop, um, if you uh, Google for Photoshop um, NVIDIA plugin, um, that'll probably bring it up and that'll allow you to, to do various things including open DDS files. So, just Okay, so our four texture files um, contain different information about um, creating the surface of the material in uh, Dragon Age. So starting from the beginning with the diffuse which ends in the suffix D, um, that contains the color information um, which is what you tend to think of as the, the, the most important one and the one that um, you conventionally think of when you think of textures. Um, so we can see it looks kind of like chainmail and leather and bits here. That's the color one, diffuse. The next one is normal. Um, this one's quite important for making the shape um, of the texture, which sounds a bit strange because um, generally textures are obviously flat, um, but it contains the information about how the light um, should reflect off of the surface, which kind of tricks your eye into thinking it's got extra shape that it doesn't have. Um, so that's very good for making realistic um, shapes on the surface of a texture. The specular um, says how reflective each surface is. So you'll notice there that the um, the leather areas, uh, if I go back to the diffuse here, these leather areas have become black because they're not reflective, um, because leather is extremely matte and isn't glossy, whereas metals are very glossy and should reflect light quite strongly. Uh, making something black in specular does not mean that it will not ever be illuminated by light, it just means that the light will not um, kind of be glossy and reflect off of it in a harsh way. Um, and finally, the tint map um, allows um, for, a drag for the Dragon Age um, toolset user to uh, modify the colors of in the diffused, um, diffused texture 
without having to actually modify the diffuse texture itself. They just make a simple tint file. And areas which are green um, will be one, one sort of section that they can tint. So they'll be tinting all of the chainmail sections and leather sections a certain colour, or tinting the metals a certain colour, and so on. Just a quick note on normal maps. Um, you may be used to working with uh, bluish coloured normal maps, and you'll probably have spotted that the uh, Dragon Age normal maps are grayscale. Um, they're using information, um, just the X and Y information, um, X on the RGB um, channel and Y, in fact it might be the other way around, uh, no, no, it's X on the alpha channel and uh, Y on the RGB, sorry. Um, if you've got yourself a um, bluish tinted normal map, say for example, um, something looks a little bit like this, um, the way you can get that to grayscale is really easy. Um, just go to File, Save As, and instead of picking DXT5, um, um, choose DXT5NM, which is just below it, uh, and hit Save. Um, and to see that, you'll have to close the texture down and open it up again, and it should look about right. There. Okay, so to understand uh, where all these bits fit onto the model, um, it's nice to um, just kind of make coloured blobs um, because we don't really know um, exactly where each bit goes. I'm interested in adding a badge on this front bit here. Um, so to figure out where that is exactly, I'm going to um, just make coloured blobs and uh, use DA Tools retexture um, function to see where that shows up. So uh, using red, I'll just uh, add a little squiggle here and a little squiggle here in yellow maybe a blue, another circle here, and uh, I don't know, a green, and another half circle here. Um, now the reason I've done those shapes has become very clear soon, so I'm going to save that out. Um, again, if you've got um, Photoshop plugin, you'll be able to save straight into a DDS format. Uh, I'm going to change its name though away from um, uh, Heavy C, I'm going to make it Heavy, um, I don't know, Z, um, just to keep the names different. So I'll save that out. Um, I should be using, um, generally DXT5 is a good one to use um, because it contains every channel including alpha. Um, in some cases you can get away with DXT1 which doesn't have an alpha. But um, don't really worry too much about that if you don't understand these things. Um, ensure that generate maps is on and just save as DXT5 and you can't go far wrong. There are better ways to do it but this works for almost everything. So. OK, now that's saved, we'll go back into DA Tool and we'll um, use Edit, Retexture, and it'll now ask us um, for the name of our file. So I'm going to hit Browse uh, and I'm going to choose, uh, oops, that's not the right one, in ARM, I'm going to Heavy Z, the one I just made, and click Open, and then OK. And that will change the diffuse um, to be using the texture I just made. So we can see which way up on our texture sheet red and yellow are, so I know where the top of the chainmail is, so it's at the top, which isn't always the case, and I can see that the um, the blue is on this bit, and the green is on the back, so blue is on the front, green is on the back, and it wraps around, and mirrors, which is important, um, because in some cases you might want to add something that isn't symmetrical, um, which for retexturing, um, you're kind of lumped with it, if it's got a mirroring texture, then that you're stuck with it, so I only drew half a circle, and you know, the full circle came up. Um, so whatever uh, design I'm going to use, I know it has to be a, a symmetrical sort of badge there. Okay, I'm not actually going to go through and, and make my badge or anything. I'm just going to use what I've got here um, because I, I can't really show you in one 10 minute tutorial how to, you know, do lots of textures, but um, try and try and source things from the internet. Um, look for pictures which are, are good as references so you're not just, you know, pulling it straight out of your imagination because because that usually leads to errors and things, so um, maybe look at medieval badges and that kind of thing um, if you're adding a badge um, or whatever else you're doing. If you're looking at different surfaces, um, you know, how does metal look? Is it just a flat grey? Well, no, it's kind of mottled and looks kind of it's very distinctive. So um, yeah, best advice is to, for, for texturing is just to, to have a go, um, but but try and look at other textures um, and look at um, photographs of textured surfaces. Okay, so once you've got um, your textures looking as you want them, in DA Tool we can use um, Save All to to save our uh, retextured one. Once you once you've got the texture showing up, um, 
and because we've changed those textures if I uh, make a new folder here um, armor changed um, and we save it today it'll now ask us to uh, rename them now because of the way um, the A tool works it doesn't really fully understand the file format which actually means if I try and put in a longer name it'll probably come up with an error telling me that it has to be exactly the same length uh, and that's just because of um, because of how the A tool works so um, we can change that later and I'll show you how to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with heavy Z um, just because. Uh, so hit OK on that one. I'll just copy that now because I'm about to need it again. Um, and we'll change this to match but we'll use heavy Z. Um, excuse me, Mr. Dot there. Um, so you're picking different names from saved eight files. So now we have a look at the eight files that's saved and these should look the same as the ones we had before. Um, let's see. Uh, armor changed. Here we go, and we've now got our new files. However, um, we're not quite done yet um, because we've only changed the diffuse texture, and you hopefully have made different changes to the tints or the, the uh, well, maybe not the tints, but certainly to the the normal and specular to to match your new surface properties. Uh, in which case, you'll need to to modify the MAO file by hand. And you can do this using Notepad. So um, either open with right-click, open with Notepad. Um, should work. Um, and you just want to have a look through, and the things you're looking for here is it's, you see it's changed here to heavy Z DDS, that's fine, but this one won't have changed at all. And this is the, the normal map and the uh, specular and the tint. So if you want to change those now, you should type in the names of your new ones. Additionally, if you did want to uh, rename it to use a longer name um, than, than the, your starting file to make it more descriptive, I would recommend you do this. Um, it's a slightly more involved process. The first thing you would need to do for your MAO file is uh, change its name. Uh, where are we here? Excuse me, there. Change this to, to whatever your uh, MAO file is. And it's a good idea to, to uh, save the actual file itself as a longer name. So I'm going to instead of calling it Heavy C, which um, it really isn't. In fact, that might even be a mistake in Dragon Age Tool. Um, these things happen. It should have been Heavy Z, probably. But we'll, we'll let that one go. Um, instead of using Heavy Z, I'm going to use uh, Heavy Mic or something like that. Um, it's a little bit more descriptive. And I'm going to save it as um, Heavy Mic. So they're all, you know, matching. Okay, so that's... The, and then you will also need to now point the, the MMH, which um, points to the MAO, we'll need to know the new name of the MAO and we need to rename the MAH. So I'm going to change the MAH's name to match. Um, there we go, so now that's Heavy Mike as well. And uh, I'll delete this one so I don't get confused by it. To change an MMH, if you try and open it in uh, Notepad, it'll look like nonsense. So we need to use um, the toolset to open uh, MMH files, um, which look a lot more sensible. So you can drag it straight into and the toolset, or you can use file, open file. Um, now we've displayed with a sort of um, expanding um, tree of stuff. Uh, I, I happen to know where this, this is, so I'm going to right click and expand all and scroll right the way down to the bottom and then come up a little bit and we're looking for the uh, material object. So here we have it as heavy Z, which is what we had called it before. I'm going to call it heavy mic. And then I'm going to go to the top and I'm going to rename this uh, the MMH name to Heavy Mike, and then it's not a bad idea just to have a quick skim through and make sure it's not kind of duplicating its information somewhere. Uh, but I think those are the only two places we need to change. Uh, a lot of this is nonsense. Um, you know, it, it, the engine makes sense of it, but you know, a human wouldn't ever kind of tweak this. Um, so I think that's the only place. Yep. Uh, so we'll just save that now. Close it. Uh, go back to our file and uh, oh, I already renamed it anyways. Um, so yeah, that's about all there is to it. Uh, and in the next video, I'll show you how you can uh, make a new variation for your file, so you can. It is a good idea to get rid of any uh, files that you don't need to have. Um, so here I've got obviously uh, five textures. I, I I'm not using this one anymore, so I would delete this one. Also, because the uh, MSH and PHY haven't been modified in any way, um, they're already in the uh, core files, so I don't need to duplicate them. And if you haven't actually changed your specular, tint, or normal, um, you can delete those too, so you're only left with those three files. 
um, that you have actually modified.